If you've worked with ZNX before, you know that this CSS property is a little, shall we say, quirky? In theory, ZNX should be pretty simple. A higher number means that it'll be more on top in the stacking order. But in reality, there are a few guidelines that you have to follow in order for it all to work. And quite frankly, they're not very intuitive. This quirkiness in working with ZNX trips up a lot of developers. So in today's tutorial, we'll be going over four reasons ZNX isn't working and the solutions to each one with real code examples. The four reasons are, number one, elements in the same stacking context will display in order of appearance with latter elements on top of former elements. Number two, elements need to have their position set to anything other than static in order for ZNX to do anything. Number three, some CSS properties like opacity and transform will put the element in a new, oftentimes unexpected stacking context. And number four, the element's z index may be unintentionally limited by its parent's z index value. Let's take a closer look at each of these four z index problems. And if you'd like to read the blog post version of this tutorial that's showing here, it's linked down in the description below. All right, so in order to illustrate these ZNX principles that we'll be going through in this tutorial, I've created a couple of code pens and they're also linked down in the description below. So you're welcome to open them up and follow along with me, or you can just kind of keep watching this video. So to start off, let's go through the first reason, and that is elements in the same stacking context will display an order of appearance with latter elements on top of former elements. So let's figure out what that means. Um, if we look at this example that we have here, um, we have a pretty simple layout that includes three main elements. So we have this image of a cat on the top, then we have this white block that has some text in it, and then we have at the bottom another image of the same cat. Let's look at the HTML markup for that. So it's pretty simple. Everything is in this section tag of class content. Then we have um, the cat top up here. We have our content block below it. And then at the bottom, we have the cat bottom. Now in this layout, we ideally want the white block of text to be on top of both of the cats. So in order to achieve this, let's look at the CSS. Um, I'm using the SAS um, SCSS syntax. We have um, added some negative margins to the CSS for both of the cat images to try to make them overlap the white block. So on the cat top, you can see that we added a negative um, margin bottom of negative uh, 100 pixels. So that's kind of moved it down and it is displaying below that white block the way we want it to. And we have tried to do the same thing for the cat bottom element. Um, you can see I just added a float right to make it on the right side. And then I added a margin top of negative 100 pixels. And that's to try to move it you know, below that white block. But you can see here, it's not doing exactly what we want. It's displaying on top of that white block. So you know, what's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, the reason for this behavior is what we were mentioning before. It's the natural stacking order on the web page. So these are guidelines that kind of determine which elements are going to be on top and which are going to be on the bottom on the page. And even if elements don't have a ZNX set, and you can see that none of these elements um, have that set, there is a rhyme and reason to which ones are going to be on top. In our case, because none of the elements have a z-index value, so that means that they're kind of all on the same level and their stacking order is then determined by the order of their appearance in the markup. So according to this rule, elements that come later in the markup will be on top of elements that come before them. So you can see here, because the, the white block comes after the first cat top, um, the white block's on top. But then, because the cat bottom element comes after the white block, the bottom cat is then displayed on top of the white block. So how do we fix you know, the CSS so that we can display this, this second cat underneath that white block? To look into that, we're going to look at the second reason. And that is that um, the element doesn't have its position set to anything other than static. So to set position for an element, you, know, you wanna add the CSS position property to anything other than static. So Oftentimes it might be position relative, position absolute. And according to this rule, positioned elements will display on top of unpositioned elements. So to fix this problem and putting, to put this cat under the white block, if we set the, um, if we set the white block to have position relative, that means that it will be 
the only element that has its position set. So the, the cats will still have their position not set. And that will, in theory, put the white block on top of the cats. So let's go back. So the white block is class content underscore underscore block. So it's over here. So if we add position relative to the white block, you can see now that the bottom cat is under the white block the way we want to. Now, the next thing we would like to do, ideally, is I want just the heads of the cats to kind of stick out from this white block. Um, yeah, I know, this is kind of a silly example. But what we want to do next is um, add this, some CSS to the cat bottom element. And we're going to use transform. And we'll rotate it. We want to rotate it 180 degrees to kind of flip it. There we go. Now, did you see what happened there? Adding the transform property then put the cat back on top of the white block. That's kind of weird, right? You know, what, like, what's going on here? So you may not run into this issue very often, but there's another aspect of this whole stacking order idea, and that's that some CSS properties like transform or opacity will put the element into its own new stacking context. And this is the, the third reason in our problems here. So what this means is that adding that transform property to the cat bottom element will make it behave as if it has a Z index of zero, even though it doesn't have its position or Z index actually set at all. This is just how it works. You know, remember we never added a Z index value to that white block. We did only add position relative to put it on top of the unpositioned cats. If we want to then put this block back on top of the cat, we need to add a Z index. So we'll say Z index, let's say maybe two, just to make sure it's on top. And then you can see that it's back on top of the cat. In my opinion, if you just make sure to add a position relative or absolute or you know other values, anything other than static, and a ZNX value to your element, I think that will solve most, if not all, of the more basic ZNX issues. If you're having trouble wondering why things aren't layered the way that you want them to. So let's move on to the last reason that the ZNX might not be working. This happens quite a bit is a bit more complex because it involves parent and child elements. And this example here is number four. The reason is the element is in a lower stacking context due to its parent's Z index level. So we have a different um, code example here and let's kind of just see how we want things to work. So we just have this web page. It has an image. Um, it has this sort of send feedback tab that you can see is on top of the regular content. And then if you click on this photo of the cat, you have this modal window that pops up and it adds this overlay. But you might notice that the pink send feedback tab is still on top of the that background. And what we want to do is we want it to be under this sort of gray overlay. Let's look into the reasons why this is happening. So if we go down into our, let's just check out the markup here. Again, everything is wrapped in this um, section element that has class content. And then we have the link here that opens the modal. So this is the image, this is that caption here. Here's the regular text on the page. And if we scroll all the way down, we have here the modal when it's open. And then we have the tab at the very end. And the tab is actually outside of that section element. So that's gonna kind of come into play later on. Let's kind of see how we've set up everything. So the content, we have its position set to relative, and we also have a Z index of one. And that is in order for the side tab, if we go all the way down to the bottom. And the side tab also has position. It's position fixed because we want it to stay the same whether we're scrolling up or down. And it has a Z index of five. So that will put the, the feedback tab on top of everything in the content. Then let's go up to the modal, which is the other element that we're kind of playing around with here. And let's see, where'd that go? Here we go. So the modal, by default, it's display none because obviously you don't want it to show up all the time, but its position is fixed also. And we have it set to a Z index of 100. And that's, you know, 100 is pretty high. We want it to be on top of everything else. If you're thinking everything has its position set to something other than static, the Z index of the modal is 100. So why is it not on top of that side tab, which has a Z index of only five? The reason for that is, if you remember previously, we addressed some of these factors that go into the stacking context. Position needs to be set, 
also the order and the markup and Z index, obviously, but there's another aspect of the stacking context. And that is that a child element is limited to the stacking context of its parent. And if we go back to the markup, the modal scroll up here. So the modal is in that section content along with everything else in on the page, except that send feedback tab and the section content. If we go back in the CSS, it has a Z index of one. So that means that even though the modal has a Z index of a hundred, that Z index of a hundred is only relative to any other element inside the section and outside of the section, it is limited to the parents Z index value, which is Z index of one. That can be very confusing because, you know, you might think the modal is set to Z index a hundred. Why is that still like not on top of the other elements? But that's because, um, if it's limited by its parent Z index value, then it doesn't mean that Z index of the child doesn't mean anything outside of the parent for other elements that are in the same level as the parent. And you can see again, if we just kind of collapse this code, you have section content and side tab, and they're on equal levels um, in the markup. So how do you fix this problem? How do we get the modal to be on top of the side tab? Well, because it is limited by the Z index of the content, its parent, what we could do is take that modal element and we'll take this. Let me just make that a bit bigger. So if we take the modal markup, take it out of that section content and put it out here. And so now it's on the same level as the side tab and as the rest of the content. So let me just collapse it so you can kind of see more clearly, but now everything's on the same level. So we have the section content with all the content in the photo, um, the link to open the modal, and then we have the modal on the same level. And then we have the side tab on the same level. So the content is at Z index one, the modal is at Z index, um, 100 and the side tab is at Z index five. If we click on the modal now, the modal at Z index 100 is going to be on top of both the side tab and the rest of the content. So that's the best solution. And another, there's an, there is an alternative solution if you can't change the markup for some reason. So let's kind of undo everything down here. So we'll put the modal back inside the content. So you can see again, it's, you know, behaving as it was at the very beginning where the send feedback tab is still on top. But what you could do if you can't change the markup and all you can do to try to fix this is change the CSS, you could get rid of that Z index and the position of the content, the parent element, because this is what's been limiting it. And we already know that because the send feedback tab has its position set and Z index set, it's going to be on top of content anyway. So now you can see because the Z index has been removed from the parent element, the modal can now kind of float up and have that Z index of hundred actually take effect. Personally, that's not my ideal solution just because I kind of like everything to be explicit, you know, have everything have its position set and Z index set. But if for some reason this does happen, you can't um, change the markup at all. And you can only change the CSS, then this solution wouldn't work. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and to sum up, most issues with ZNX can be solved by following these two guidelines. One, check that the elements have their position set and the ZNX numbers are in the correct order. And two, make sure that you don't have any parent elements limiting the ZNX level of their children. So that's it for our tutorial on ZNX. If you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment below. And if you want to stay updated with new videos, don't forget to subscribe as well as turn on notifications with that bell. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.